The second step of the gearbox assembly involves adding the side cover into the assembly file. So we'll go up to Insert Components, which is in the Assembly tab of the Command Manager, and click on Insert Components. You may get a dialog box that pops up as soon as you click the button, depending on how SOLIDWORKS is configured on your computer. If you do not, you can always click Browse in the Property Manager of the Insert Component command. Go and select the side cover from our side cover lab, and this will be the part file. You should get a graphics preview near your cursor. If you do not, you can check graphics preview under options in the property manager. Go ahead and left click any, anywhere in the graphics area of the, uh, of the assembly file to place the side cover down in the assembly. You'll notice that its orientation is a little bit off if we're trying to put the side cover right here. You can right click and drag on the side cover to, ro to rotate it closer to the orientation that we're looking for. Now to, re now to relate the side cover to the housing, we need to use mates. So go up to the mate command in the assembly tab of the command manager, click on mate, and then you will see the mate, pro the mate property manager show up. There is the list of standard mates, and then also the box for making our mate selections. SOLIDWORKS is smart enough to where if we make certain mate selections, it will guess what type of mate we want. For example, I would like the, in the inner diameter of the side cover and the inner diameter of the front boss of the housing to share the same axes. So if I select these two cylindrical surfaces, SOLIDWORKS automatically assumes that I wanted a concentric mate, which makes two cylindrical faces have the same axes. This is indeed what I want, and it moves the parts into the orientation that will result so that I can see if this indeed is what I was looking for, and press the OK button in the property, man in the property manager to confirm this mate selection. Now you might notice that down in the, in, in the taskbar, you see under defined. That usually only shows up when we're in the sketch environment, but in assemblies it also shows up because we need to fully define each component to be related to each other in a way to where they, they can't move or um, they only move in the ways that our design intends for those components to move. For, a, for example, it's probably not our intention for the side cover to move in this fashion with relation to the housing. So we need to add a couple more mates. The second mate we'll, we'll add is a concentric mate with one of the bolt holes in the hole pattern on the side cover. And then with one, one of the tapped holes in the hole pattern on the housing. Select those two cylindrical surfaces, and concentric mate is, uh, is automatically selected because the two faces that I selected were cylindrical, so it automatically assumes that I wanted a concentric mate, which I did. So press OK to confirm this mate selection. And now if you left click and drag the component, you'll see how it's a able to move the final mate we would want to add is a coincident mate be between the back face of the side cover and the front face of the front boss. So go ahead and click on the front base on the front face of the front boss and then on the back face of the side cover to, for SOLIDWORKS to, auto, to automatically assume a coincident relation or sorry not relation a coincident mate. You can see a preview of what they will look like 
and press OK to confirm the selection. We can see down in our taskbar that our assembly is now fully defined. So that is all the mates that we needed to add for our side cover in relation to our housing. So let's press OK on the mate command one more time to get out of the command. If you try and move the side cover with your mouse, you will notice that you can't. And the note pops up that says the selected component is fully defined. It cannot be moved. Now we also want the side cover to be on the back side. So I could do all of the things I just did with, with the mates and the insert components with, with this first side cover on this side. But that seems like a lot, a lot of work. So instead, I'm going to do mirror components. It works a lot like the other mirror commands, except we're dealing with components now in an assembly. I can go up to the drop-down of linear component pattern in the assembly tab of the command manager, and then go down to the bottom and click mirror components. First, we need to select the mirror plane, which will select the front plane of the assembly because it's the same as the front plane of our housing part, which goes right through the middle of, of the housing. And then for components to mirror, we'll select the side cover. Now we're not quite done yet. Press the right arrow, which is next for the property manager, to go over to setting the, or, the, desired, or, the desired orientation for the side cover. We can, or, we can orbit to see what our preview of our side cover is going to look like. And you could see that this is not quite the orientation that we want. So to reorient the component, you can go to the property manager and click the right arrow to change the orientation to more what we were looking for. Notice the other options that you have in the set in the set orientation section of the mirror components pro property manager we can create a, a opposite hand version which becomes very handy in sheet metal assembly design and we could we could also mirror our components based off center of mass rather than on a bounding box center which is just the center of the G, the geometrical extents of our parts but anyways, this is what we wanted, so let's press OK on the Mirror Component Property Manager. And voila, we have our, we have our second side cover, which is fully, de, fully defined. And we see that there is a mirror, mirror, a mirror component item in our feature man in our feature manager design tree we can also see all all of the mates that we have in, in our assembly file under the mates section now right now would be a good time to take some notes on some of the things that we've done in this video I've prepared a my a Microsoft Word document which contains a couple of notes on what we've done like like we have done a concentric mate so you can pause to copy this or to write this in your own words in your own Microsoft Word file we've done a, co a coincident mate we've done mirror components And we've seen the two different options in mirror components, which are different from our other, our other mirror features that we're used to in the part environment.